in verse number 1 through 5. <clears throat> when y'all get this, say amen. amen. Psalm chapter number 15, verse number 1 through number 5 tonight. Now we're going to finish up for what I preached on two weeks ago. Last Sunday, we didn't have no preaching. Now the Holy Ghost came to move through the service and was shouting, weeping, and praising God. And I didn't even preach last Sunday. Like God really came and showed up last Sunday evening. It was as if you felt the spirit and the power of God. He didn't do the same thing this week. Not something he did every Sunday evening, but he did it last Sunday. We really met with God without even preaching. Uh, so I had this message prepared for last Sunday, but we never had. I never preached last Sunday, so last Sunday he was on preach tonight. Uh, Psalm chapter 15, verse 1, he said, Lord, who shall abide in our tabernacle? Who shall dwell in our holy hills? He that walketh uprightly and worketh righteousness and speaketh truth in his heart. He that backbiteth not with his tongue, nor doth evil to his neighbor, nor take a reproach against his neighbor. And who I, a vile person, is condemned. But he honored them that fear the Lord. He that swears his own hurt and changed the what? He that put it not out his money to usury, nor take a reward against his, the innocent. He that does these things should never be what? Time of misses is the things you must do to get closer to God. Things you must do to get closer to God. Part two, let's pray y'all and have a seat. Father, we thank you, Lord Jesus, for uh, this service and I ask you bless the uh, the message about the proceeding. Thank you for uh, all of you who did before the service this evening tonight, Lord. Help us. Give us uh, wisdom and knowledge and spiritual ears and spiritual eyes to see some things from the Word of God to how we get closer to God. We ask you to bless now. Give me power. In Jesus' name we pray. The church said, Amen. Amen. So I'm going to move up fast. Now we were saying last, two Sundays, evenings ago, we were talking about how to get closer to God. Uh, and David said, Lord, who shall abide in our what? Tabernacle. I just want to do a little review here. Tabernacle was a place what the, the high the priest and the high priest went to do the service of God. It was two parts of the tabernacle. The first part was the outer court. On the outer court, they would kill animals and they would make that, that kill turtle doves and lambs. And it was a lot of blood on the outer course of the tabernacle. The tabernacle was the place where they went to worship God. It was a place where they, they met with God. And so the priest, uh, the priest, what he'll do, he'll go on the outer court. And the high priest, what well, he'll do, he'll go to the inner court, and the high priest will go there and make sacrifice for his sins and for the sins of the people. And what would happen is it was a veil between the, the, the inner court and the outer court. And so the inner court is where the word of God was, the lampstand, and, and the, the ark of the covenant. The ark of the covenant is a, is a picture of the presence of God. And it also had a, a show bread, a table show bread, and it had six bread this way and six bread that way. Which means it's a, a picture of the 12 tribes of Israel, but it also pictures the 66 books. And so they had kind of Bible considered the word, word of God as bread of life. And so they would have the bread on that show table, on the show bread there, and they would have the 12 loaves of bread on that thing. And also they have a lampstand which symbolizes the light of Jesus Christ. And so they had the presence of God there, they had light there, they had the word of God there. That was the sacred place. That was called the holiness of the holy. And what they'll do, that place was so holy that they'll put some veil on the high priest's hem and they'll put a rope around his ankle in case that high priest would go into the Holy of Holies. If he went right with God, that man would die. God would kill him. And so they knew that. And so what they'll do, they'll put a rope on his ankles and put a veil on his hem. And so they hear that bell ring it. They knew they know that he was dead. And so they'll take that rope and drag him out of that place. Because only the high priest had the authority by the Lord Jesus to go into the Holy of Holies. And when Jesus came, the Bible said the veil was ripped from the bottom to the top. And now we don't only need a high priest. We don't need a man to go to us for God. We can go to, we can go to God on our own. Y'all don't need me to pray for you. Y'all don't need me to go to God for you. I want to be like this. You go directly to God, and I can pray for you, but you don't need me to go to God. You can go to God in your bedroom. You can go to God in your car. You can go to God in your home. You can pray while you're walking. You can pray while you're laying down. You can pray while you're watching TV. But back in the Bible days, they can't do that. They had to go through a man to get to God. Now, we only got to go to one man, and that one man name is Jesus Christ. And we go to the Jesus, to the God of all. Why has the veil have been broken? Why has now we have direct access to God because of the blood of Jesus Christ? And David asked the question, Lord, who shall die in our tabernacle? 
Amen. So he says, of course, well, who can walk close to God? Got these people here some of these Jews knew what the tabernacle mean. They mean they knew it mean a, a, a place where you worship God. He said, who should abide in our tabernacle? And who should dwell in our what? Holy hill. The holy hill is Mount Zion. As a mountain of the people of God. And we're going to be on Mount Zion one day to pray. And so man is teaching us how can we get close to God. Kind of Bible like said, draw nigh to God and God draw nigh to what? He said, if the pastor draw nigh to God, he said, he draw nigh to God. How I mean that a pastor should be close to God. But y'all can be as close to God just like I am. Don't think that I got special privilege with God like I'm a pastor. No, we all believers. And we got the same access to God. You got the same access to God. Just like I do. Amen. So I'm no special guy with me. Y'all, we all believers. He just called me to the pastoral position to lead the church. But we all are believers here. Yeah. And so they asked the question, who should abide in our tabernacle? Who should dwell in our holy one? He. And they begin to tell us how to get close to God. We're going to review it a bit. First, he said, he that walked in what? Upright. We got to be the Christian walking that crooked line. You know that that I'm focusing on don't care about the income tax and they ain't living with you. And Christian lie on the income tax and get a free dollar. See, that's not walking upright. Hey, hey, that's not walking upright. You know you got caught speeding the police asking why you pulled you over. Say, well, I don't know why you pulled me over. You know why you got pulled over. You know you're speeding. You know why some of the people get tickets because they lie to the police. He said, why well, I pulled you over? I don't know why. Why you want, why you want to go back to the police over there? They're killing people. Why you want to go back to the police? I ain't nobody. So I got a police that I led to the board. And when I talked for hours or something the other day, and I always went, why did the police let me go? I can't, 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 I can
you come to Sunday because I don't want to make you lie. So I, I said, please don't say you come to Sunday. You know, a first thing for God, I'm living this Sunday night. I'm there Sunday night. You know, they don't even have no intention to come to church now. They don't even know. But what I'm saying is, when David is giving us the ingredients that we need to get close to God. You can't be close to God speaking lies. You can't be close to God walking the dead, not walking upright. How can you be close to God and not walking in righteousness? Then he said, this is a problem with a lot of black women have a problem with this. A lot of black women have a problem with this. Don't get mad at me. <laughs> Verse 3 said, He that bite by it now with his what? Tongue. You know what backbite means? Gospel. We call it, I mean, you're a tail bearer. You tell everybody, you know. <laughs> How? He said, You cannot be a tail bearer. You cannot be a gossiper. You cannot go around telling people business. You can't be a person that go around and talk about people when you got information about them. Right. Amen. He said, He that back by it on his what? Tongue. Tongue. Don't we have a lot of it on Facebook? Amen. I don't understand why folks go on Facebook and tell their personal business. I can't understand it, but then it work. They have marriage problems going that thing. They have power that mom and dad go on Facebook and tell you. They have power cousin that they go on Facebook and tell you. One girl say, hey, I don't call no man in my family, but I don't want y'all to know y'all got a problem with me. Y'all can call me. Now, first thing I said, if you got a problem, Instead of you put on Facebook, you know who got a problem with you. Why didn't you call them and talk to them instead of put on Facebook? Right. Backbite. See? Backbite. Y'all call us before they like the gossip about people being there. Be honest with people like to be a tear bearer and go around telling the whole business. Girl, boy, you heard what's going on over there. Yeah, you know, you don't tell you, you don't know why I know. And they go around talking about folk business. And that's called backbite. Amen. So God said, you want to be close to me? Hey, if you want to walk close to me, you can't have that back by Amen. Amen. I got a little pride on that one. Amen. I'm saying tonight, if wrong is wrong, and right is right, and God said, you want to be close to me, you can't be a what? Back by So don't be a back by y'all. Don't go around slamming. Don't be a tear bearer. Don't be new to what? Or WXBT. Don't be all these new channels going on spreading book business. How? What I'm saying tonight, don't be a bear to get out there. The Bible said in the Atheists, all the man they want to do is to hear and to tell some new things. Amen. Amen, Sister Amen. Hey, they want to go around tell them. The Bible called a busybody. Right. Huh? They go from house to house. You know what I mean? They go to people house talking about full business. That's a busybody. And that's a backbiter. And God said, you want to be close to me. You cannot be a backbiter. Amen. And so now we're going to finish up tonight about how to get close to God, part two. Look what he said in verse number three again. He doesn't backbite now his tongue, knowing that even to his what? Hold on now. You can't do even to your neighbor uh, take a reproach against your neighbor. So the Bible says, he that back by now is done, nor do I even tell him what? Nor do I reproach against him what? You know who your neighbor is? Your neighbor is anybody you meet. Your neighbor is anybody you meet. And so God says, it will be right with God, it will be close to God, you cannot be willing to do evil to your neighbor. I know the word evil, the word evil literally means to call someone some hurt.
Now they get put out of the house. Amen. They just want them a $100 person. They don't care. They don't care about nobody else. They just want that way. And they don't give their way to put their room and slap the door and do that. Amen. Selfish. Reproach against your word. Now you say right here. I look at the word reproach. The word reproach. 
before you can charge with fault and severe language. You know what that means? You see somebody you feel like they've done you wrong or done your kids when you get to curse them out. You feel like they've done you wrong. You get said, you better write this. You better write that. You better write this. You got our mental mind. Because you mental mind is all now. You just the right one now, baby. You can mental mind out of mind. You ever been there? Things of God. 
God said you kill God, all of them type of folks will be right with God. Right. I'm going to tell y'all something tonight. I hate to say this, but it's true. We got too many Christians, y'all. Heroes are worthy of it. Huh? Most of our kids are heroes are football players, NBA players, and NFL. Most of our young ladies, the heroes are our models on the magazine. They wear about five eleven, five eight, wear about 120. And they're the heroes. The heroes are folks on TV that make them movies. Hey, God said, no, if you get close to God, you can have a God person as a hero. I want you to stand preachers. I'm gonna tell you something around right here, man. We want, we want, we want young ladies and young men and church members to your heroes to be preachers, to be women of God and deeds of God. Don't be ashamed of God. And no one that leave this airplane to follow Jesus Christ. So soul to be saved, for soul to get baptized, for soul to get discipled. You are our real heroes. Amen. Now, folks, you look at your TV, they don't care if you die and go there. I don't have a person here that don't care if you went to hell. They all don't care. They don't even know you. They ain't gonna spend one time, I mean, one sacrament with you. They ain't gonna spend one sacrament with me. Huh? But them are heroes, people that's on TV. That walk around the red carpet. Got uh, uh, music jackets and uh, $200 shoes on and 12, now $10 on the watches. They don't have the real heroes that are Christians. Got mm -hmm. the car, what kind of car they got? Ooh, they got a nice car. Ooh, they got a big house. They ain't gonna speak, they ain't talk to a caller right now. Tell me $10, $20 to buy a pair of shoes in school. Tell me you need $100 to buy some school supplies. Hey, call right now, tell me you got a stuff that your mother might have done to be paid. Don't call me Hebrews. But you call a man of God. You call a woman of God that loves Jesus. Got a little change. They are going to their pockets. They are going to their wallets. They are going to church of Canada. They never have to be out. But most people, when I'm not saying yes, I'm a preacher to sign your mind. But when the hero came, you know, you got to put on the drive. But you want to ask a man of God or a woman of God for it, you got to put your mind. Ain't that true? Where, 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 where,
Every day, I'm going to go to bed because it looked up to her. And then, oh, I see and see. What a sad case. All right, and God said, Let me close to me. You cannot look up to a vile person. A vile person is this. A vile person is a simple person, an impure person, a person that's wicked, a person that's a person that's by sin. That's what the word vile is. You know your hero tonight? Your hero is somebody that's a whore. A man that got six, seven baby mamas. He the hero in that day. Now, that, that woman, she your hero in it. And she on TV half naked. That's your hero. And she cursed like a stolen dog on that TV show y'all watch it. She cursing half naked. And that's your hero. You look up to her, you want to be just like her. And God's looking close to me. You can't, you can't do that. You can't, be, you can't respect a person like that. Can they go against God and his word? And I'm like tonight. I guarantee you, I'm going to tell you, I'm going to get y'all something. Don't get nervous tonight. Hey, who the hell like you heard Pastor Star, Brother Sam Davis? Who the hell like you heard uh, uh, Jeff Pickett? How many of y'all like have heard Paul Chapel? Hey, how many of y'all have like heard Jack Howes? How many of y'all have like heard Lee Robinson? Hey, how many of y'all have like heard me, uh, John Deacons? I'm not letting you borrow 
one Sunday night. Let I let you borrow hundred pay my dollar back. Now God said, "Don't be right with me, close to me. You cannot put your use your money for you to spread." And the man won't be down with this y'all. And he that nor take a reward against the word yes. So what that means? We call that kidneys. I got to be with Joe down the street, Tim. I need five stacks to go kill him. Huh? That's going on with them. Y'all know that. I need a thousand. I go kill that with an investment man. I'm a, I'm a high hit man. He said, no, he can take a reward against the what? Innocent. You know how many people, they wife, they kill their wife and husband, get their insurance check? They had somebody kill them. And they, and they, and they had their spouse kill them, get their insurance money. Now, some innocent man, you know, and they know this person, when he killed this person, kind of man said, he killed my wife, I'm going to be $20,000, and he's going to be a million dollars back for insurance. And now this man going to kill this innocent woman because her husband wants an insurance policy. And God said, you're going to be right with me, you can't do that. What I'm saying to church tonight, if you get close to God, you've got to be willing to do these things tonight. You have to. You can't be a big liar. You can't go around and curse people out when they do you wrong. You can't go around uh, taking the money and, and trying to hide interest of people because you know they, you take them back to the post. Then you can't be going around being a bottom body. You can't go around bad out there, everybody, you see. And talk about, hey, I can't be how fast she is. Or I can't be how fast she is. Like, look at this shit. Like, hey, hey, like, I can't even get the racket cover on. I can't even, oh, God, you can't be part of that nonsense. You know? Can't be making fun of people because how they look at what they have and what they don't have. What I'm saying to them, all this stuff that I go around, talking bad about people, laughing at people, you take the money and, and talk to people, how to get you the people pay back. And you're going to pay the wrong shot, back, the wrong shot, going to do something to them. So they're going to pay that man double what they borrow. It's all right. I just say. So now they be for poor and the rich. You know what the, the, the rich about getting rich and the poor people get poor. Amen. I'm telling you, I got the system that's sad that way. They keep you poor. They keep you mad. They keep you borrowing. How many times have we as Christians that we cannot help them devile them impure, them wicked people as our heroes? Because God is not pleased with us. Who are your heroes tonight? Who you look up to tonight? If I, if right now you, you have a diary, I go to your diary, and you got your top five heroes, I want to know how many Christians are this hero. I doubt it probably now. One last time you ask a Christian to sign your Bible. Yes. People ask me, uh, football players, the NFL, and rappers, and all that stuff, after they autograph all the time. And they go on TV and boast about it. I got an autograph with so and so, so and so. I got a picture with so and so. One last time you took a picture with a man of God, one of God said, Look at this man, I, I took, a, I took a, a picture with this man of God. If you take a picture with Jay Z, you go tell everybody about it. And I don't want to mess up, y'all. It's all right, though. Amen. And so God said, they said, Who should dwell, who should abide in our tabernacle? And who should dwell in our what? Holy hell, he that walketh upright, he that what? Work righteous, he that speaketh the truth in his heart. Right? Amen. He that not bind out his tongue. Right? So God said, he that, he that by a person not to God said, you will be close to me. If you don't draw close to me, you want me to draw close to you. You got to be willing to do these things to get close to what? God. I got a question for you. Are you willing to do these things to get close to God? The closer you get to God, the closer God will be to you. I'm there, I'm there, y'all saying, I came out here last night, man, woke me five acres of land, grass wet, because it's going to be raining. And I look up to the stars and see the sky out there. And I'm out there praying to the Lord. And boy, it seemed like God was right there with me. Some y'all don't know what I'm talking about, because you didn't spirit yet. But I'm out there last night, man, about almost eight, so I got done praying about nine, almost nine o'clock out here. Cars passed by. I'm just walking and praying to God. Boy, boy that ain't nothing like that. Ain't nothing like that. I told Tom today, I pray the Lord stop the rain. Oh, we're about to bring back out here. And Tom said, Pastor, no, they don't know God ain't gonna stop no rain here. And Tom got in the car, he said, Pastor, you said he's gonna stop rain, didn't he? Sun started shining. Boy, would you like to have a close relationship with God that when you pray, you know God will answer? Would you like to have a relationship with God that you know when you pray, according to God will, you know that God will answer prayer? Because have that be that close to God that you know that God will hear what you got to say. What you got to be that close to God? <laughs> what you got to be that close to God? Y'all don't understand that I do, man. Thank God for y'all patience. I didn't know the Lord. Because the Lord's something.